Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Tuesday the 12th of July 2022. Today's Mill news, it was a match day. Not only was it a match day, that the match we all knew about, there was a secret match taking place at the training ground this afternoon as well. So let's find out about that first. This totally shocked and surprised everyone. But no one had a clue what this was about. And uh, so yeah, Mill will gain match, match practice at Calment Road. This is from millfc.co.uk. Mill met Bromley in a pre-season practice match at Calment Road on Tuesday afternoon. Three half-hour periods were played in sweltering conditions at the Lions training ground. So it was not played under official rules. It was three half-hour periods. So very much a kick-around game. Early on, Mason Bennett, George Evans and Ryan Leonard were in the thick of the goldmouth action, whilst former Lion Byron Webster lined up at the back for the visitors. Evans is driving a free kick from 20 yards out, saw the Lions into an early lead, before Bennett's rasping drive also hit the back of the net in this first period. Um, a solo run from Scott Malone then almost produced a wonder goal, but his effort went wide before an own goal saw... Mill's lead extended. Uh, Malone then got his reward with a header, so Mill alone scored with a header, before a short corner routine saw Evans double his tally. Uh, Nana Boateng and Abdul Abdul Malik were introduced late on, with the latter nearly capping his appearance with a strike, but his shot on the turn was saved by the goalkeeper. Um, so that's all we have from that. That's all we have. There's no team. Um, so we don't exactly know who played. Uh, the club did put some videos of the goals up on Twitter not all of the goals, just some of them and that kind of uh, disappointed a few people because they could see in the background of one of the goals a certain Sion Fleming and those who were a bit clued up uh, put two and two together and thought hang on a minute if Sion Fleming's played this afternoon he won't be playing tonight at Dartford and that was correct. He he didn't play at Dartford tonight, and a lot of people kind of uh, a bit 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 pissed off with that, a bit upset. Um, Mill's record signing, one point seven million pounds, Zion Fleming, not being introduced to the fans at the Dartford game, not being able to to go and see him with your own eyes and uh, witness the wonder. Here's the thing: why why not? Why not? Is he struggling to adapt? Is he struggling? Is that why did they not want to put him through the ringer of the mill crowd a bit early on before he's managed to find his feet? Are they trying or is Gary Rout trying to keep his powder dry? He knows that other clubs are watching. This is a public game. There are um, people in the crowd that could be watching and he doesn't really want to give away Mill's formation set up and how they're going to play before they go into that first game of the season against Stoke City uh, it could be that but uh, you would think that when we get to the Ipswich game then you're going to you're going to see more of what we're going to expect this season um, so yeah so they don't even give us a score you have to add it all up yourself and if you've done it it's obviously it was 5-0 to Millwall uh, two from George Evans, one Mason Bennett, one from Scott Malone, and uh, one own goal. So Mill will beat Bromley FC 5 0 at the training ground this afternoon. And we have what we see got Mason Bennett, George Evans, Ryan Leonard, Scott Malone, Zion Fleming, we saw in the, in the thing, and they say uh, Nana Burton and Abdul, Abdul Malik were subs. So we've only got seven players there. So we have no idea about uh, any of the other players. Um, so let's get to the actual game, game, game today. Uh, the one that many, many Mill fans went to, and we'll we'll get to that later. Uh, Mill East pre-season victory over Dartford. Mill were two nil victors against Dartford in a pre-season friendly at Princess Park on Tuesday night. Benicafobi opened the scoring at the home of the Darts before a stunning strike from Tyler Burry doubled the lead in the second half. Gary Rout opted to field a completely different 11 to the one which took to the field against Bromley earlier in the day. Well, we don't know that because you didn't give us a team, so how do we know that? 
uh, with Bartosz Piotrkowski starting between the sticks. And new signings Charlie Cresswell, George Honeyman, and Benek Fobi partnering Tom Bradshaw in attack also playing. On a balmy night in Kent, the game got underway in front of a fervent crowd at Princess Park. The Lions retaining possession and on 11 minutes, Mill took the lead as the Fobie was able to slot home from inside the penalty area after Tyler Berry was taken out. Uh, one of the two Darford trialists was then able to fashion a chance for an equaliser with 16 minutes on the clock, but a combination of Cresswell's block and the follow-up rolling wide of the far post was enough to keep Bierkowski's sheet clean. Tom Bradshaw then broke through the last line of defence to shoot but found his effort blocked by Dan Wilkes before, that's the goalkeeper, before Burry's interception allowed the attacker a run on goal, but he was crowded out by the darts defence. And there's a picture of Bradshaw, and before we move on and read the rest of it, what is happening with his socks here? Has he cut them? Um, obviously, uh, this is a friendly game, so there's no regulation on kit, so he could probably get away with that, but he's got some kind of bad bandage around his left calf. And his right calf, I don't know if he's rolled his socks down or he's cut it, but well, what's going on there? Maybe he just did it so they match, I don't know, it's a bit weird. Um, won't, definitely won't be able to get away with that in a league game. Uh, Honeyman then found the onrushing Danny McNamara shortly after the, the halfway point of the half, but his half volley sailed well over the crossbar. Uh, McNamara... Manara, McNamara then attempted an effort from distance as the halftime whistle came into view, but he struck wide. Billy Mitchell sent a shot wide as the second half got underway, with McNamara's interception then finding a phobie on 54 minutes, but as he fed Bradshaw, the striker's effort was blocked by the defence. Bradshaw then skipped past the back line and lofted an attempt towards the net, but Darford's Maxwell Statham was there to hack it clear. Uh, a Honeyman, a honey man, honey monster strike was parried behind by Wilkes as the Lions began to up the ante with Cresswell's shot being deflected behind from the resulting corner kick. But on 68 minutes, Mill found a second goal in some style. After he picked the ball up around 30 yards out, Burry proceeded to curl a delightful attempt past the despairing dive of the substitute trialist keeper to find the back of the net. A phobie smart turn and dart towards the penalty area and then set up the chance for a mill third with 15 minutes to play but he curled wide from the edge of the box. At the other end Tom Bonner's effort was deflected behind before the ensuing corner saw the ball headed wide. Bradshaw's attempt was then tipped behind in 5 minutes of top stoppage time, a, a chance that acted as the final effort of the evening. And that the game was delayed, that second half was delayed for, at some points and we'll get into that later so the, the mill team was Biakowski, McNamara, Murray Wallace, Cooper, Afobi, Billy Mitchell, Bradshaw, Burry, Cresswell, Honeyman, Topolodge who apparently played very well and they say uh, Nana Burton came on as a substitute for Topolodge in the 81st minute. Subs not used Sanford, Ockley, Allen and Abdul Malik who as we've read was that involved in the Bromley game as a substitute as well and George Walker and the scorers were a phobia on 11 Burry on 69 and the attendance was 3,952 and if you watch yesterday's video you will know because I told you that Princess Park um, capacity is around 4,100 so completely and utterly full to the full to the brim there um, and uh, just a little advert at the end there, reminder, Mill's next friendly game is on Friday the 15th, so three days away. Uh, it is at Colchester United. Um, it's 7.30 p 30 kickoff. If you don't want to buy tickets to it, it is live on Mill TV. And you can watch it wherever you are in the world, I assume. And um, all you've got to do is... Log into mulefc.co.uk, sign up to a mule profile, and then pay five English pounds to watch the game to get a match pass. Um, so, moving on now to this picture. So, someone took a picture. This is from Mill Halfway Line on Twitter. As you can see, absolutely rammed, packed to the gills. Uh, so much so that you can see some of the kids are sitting on the barriers at the front um, hanging over it you know it's kind of uh, crammed in there sardines in a tin 
um, nearly full capacity now I imagine because a lot of them would want to see Mill's new signings uh, Zion Fleming, George Honeyman but we only you only got to see George Honeyman Charlie Cresswell you saw him um, but he's on loan so but I think a lot of people would have wanted to see Zion Fleming now hopefully it's because they they don't want to uh, they're, they're protecting him cotton wool that kind of thing and uh, they didn't want him to get uh, up close because this is a non-league ground and obviously he would have been very close to the fans and uh, could have um, I don't know what he's like could have uh, upset him a bit I don't know but we'll see we'll, we'll see what happens with him and uh, I'm sure when you spend that much money on a player you want to do everything right that you can to help him succeed uh, at what you're trying to do at the club so although it's disappointing that we didn't see him tonight you didn't see him tonight if you went to the game that uh, the long term is that he performs for Millwall Football Club in the league gets us the goals that we need the assists that we need to, to get the points in the league to get in the playoffs or even better go up um, so we're going to move on to this from newsatden.co.uk it's a match report from the game but obviously we've just read the one at uh, Mill FC so we're just going to scroll down and go to the takeaways from the game uh, a phobie takes his chance again Benek phobia two clear cut chances against Crystal Palace on Saturday and he scored them both he had what one chance in the opening stages against Arthur, and then the outcome was exactly the same. Strikers can only work with what they're given. For most, it takes a handful of chances for them to stick one in the net. But Afobi has been showing that he's not an ordinary forward. It might only be pre-season, but three goals in two games is a very good return, and one that Millwall will hope to see continue in the championship season. Yes, please. Patience is a virtue for Bury. Bury's hesitancy in the final third may have cost him a couple of goals, but it also helped him score an absolute screamer. His second half strike was down to him being calm and collected rather than rushing his shot or looking to pick out a teammate. He was given time to find to to find off the net from distance to find the back of the net from distance. Uh, the 21 year old will likely face increased competition with the new arrivals at the club this summer but he's stating his claim for a spot in the starting lineup with efforts like that. Commanding Cresswell, Mill will have a number of imposing centre back options at the club, and Charlie Cresswell is certainly one of them. The Leeds United loanee has slotted in to the back line perfectly so far. Not only are his physical attributes standing out, but his men mental strengths are too. The defender is incredibly calm on the ball, but he's also great at organising his teammates. That might seem like a natural thing, but given that this is his first loan move and that he's only 19 years old, it shows a tremendous maturity. Championship forwards won't enjoy playing against him next season indeed indeed um so we are going to move on now to um some funny business that happened this morning um so this 404 error page not found on the mill fc website now why is that this morning at around 11:44. Mill put up a story of a link that said Mill's Lee Turner announces retirement. Weird. So by the time I get round to it, I click on the link. I get this. The story's not there. It's not there. Half, uh, 45 minutes later from when they put up the original story, the URL is still the same. The URL of this is uh, millwfc.co.uk, blah, 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 backslash, backslash, whatever. Mills Lee Turner announces retirement. And then it comes to it's been that's been taken down and this is up. Goalkeeper coach Turner leaves Millwall. So he's obviously said to them, Whoa, what the fuck? I'm not I'm I haven't retired, I'm just leaving. Which is weird. Again, another member of the coaching staff leaves, disappears, vanishes, goes away. We had this with Joe Carnall, the other guy Bloom, what was he, Ollie Bloom, Charlie Bloom, whatever. Um, we've had it with Callum Davidson. Now we've had it with Lee Turner. Which, not only that, but we're halfway through pre-season. Why is he leaving now? Did they give him the tin tack or did he walk away or what? What's happening here? So uh, let's have a read of this. This is from Millwall FC.co.uk. 
Uh, goalkeeper coach Turner leaves Millwall. Millwall goalkeeper King coach uh, Lee Turner has left the club. Turner, who joined the Lions in 2018, has overseen the development of goalkeepers at first team and under 23s level, such as Jordan Archer, Bartosz Bukowski and George Long, acting as a mentor and a friend over the years. Lee was a pivotal part of the first team management set up under previous and current regimes, and Bukowski credited Turner as one of the main reasons behind his double player of the season win in 2019-20 and 2020-21. Everyone at Millwall wishes Lee well for the future. So what has gone on here then? What is happening here? This is a weird one. Very weird. What is happening at this club? But here's the thing. Never fear, because almost immediately the club announced who was replacing him. So I don't know if this has been going for a while. Maybe he told, here's the thing, maybe he told them earlier and they said, can you just hang on until we find a replacement? So today they find the replacements and then they're, oh, okay, we, we've found this guy. Let's announce it today. But then why would they announce it that he's retired and then change the story 45 minutes later? Um, did they tell him that he was retiring just to he didn't want to let them know that he was leaving as well so he said oh i'm thinking of retiring oh. and then it's they've actually put that up and he said oh, fuck if people think i'm retiring i won't be able to get a job i'm only 52 years old and then he said oh, can you change that story I, I haven't actually retired some weird fucking funny business going on here so this is what happened do you recognize that that's andy marshall he's put on a bit of weight but still not as bad as most. Uh, this is from millwc.co.uk. Millwall announced Andy Marshall as new goalkeeping coach. So there you go. Uh, Millwall Football Club is pleased to announce the appointment of Andy Marshall as the club's new goalkeeping coach. The 47-year-old, who holds the record of the only Lions sub to play in an FA Cup final for the club, takes over from Lee Turner. Marshall's playing career took in clubs such as Norwich City, Ipswich Town and Coventry City, but the goalkeeper memorably played for Millwall initially on loan in 2004 before joining on a permanent basis and going on to play in the showpiece occasion against Manchester United. Marshall will oversee the development of the club's first team and under-23 goalkeepers. Now here's the thing, is this going to mess up Bierkowski? Um, Hopefully not, because like Bierkowski credits Turner with improving him and helping him be very good at his job. Hopefully that doesn't mess up Bierkowski because that might be a problem going forward. And you don't want that now because he's literally... You're, wait, you're kind of waiting for him to drop off because he's getting old. And now he's saying, well, I'm a vegan. I'm, I'm really healthy. I'm prolonging my career doing that, which is all fine. But you can't go on forever. I mean, there comes a time, 36, 37, 38, 39, you're going to... You can't be playing at this level at the, t at the top of your ability as you used to do. And that we need you to perform. So is this going to be the catalyst for, for him to drop off? Hopefully not. Hopefully he can keep going. And we can see him play as well this season as he did last season and the season before. Um, but yeah, weird one here. Now, see what's what's this about? What is this about? Hopefully, Hopefully it's... Lee Turner just leaving, wanting to leave, and he just left. Um, and he thought, okay, now's the time. Let's go, and that was it. Um, now, here's the thing. Now, Lee Turner, I don't know how good a coach he is, but is this a bit of football snobbery? Because he is a, in terms of playing career, he's a non-league legend. He's played... All of his career in the non-league, he hasn't played at the highest level, like Andy Marshall has. Is that a factor? Is that they want people, they want a, a goalkeeper who's played in the Premier League because that's where we're aiming for. So he knows the level that the Premier League needs to be at to be a goalkeeper. So he's done it. He's been there, done it, got the badges. That's it. He was there in the Premier League as a goalkeeper. Now, Lee Turner wasn't. He was at Margate. He's, he's a non-league legend, but does that really matter if you're a coach? I mean, I think Jose Mourinho is one of the best coaches in the world. He didn't play football, I don't think. Not to a high level, at, anyway. Like, Brian Clough, he was a very good player. He got injured. 
So there are like, do you need to be a good coach? Do, do you need to be playing at the highest level to be a good coach? Oh, it doesn't. Don't think so. I mean, it's it helps, I assume. But maybe in this in this kind of thing, like if you're coaching kids, yeah, you can coach kids, and you can get them to to a standard. Um. But if you're like if you're coaching like Bobby Akowski, can you can you give him that little bit more that he needs to get to? If you haven't played played in the Premier League and and get to that level, I don't know. Hopefully, it's not that they didn't just bin him off and they just uh, he it was him who left. I don't know, but would that be worse if Millwall were a bit ruthless and just told him, look, you need to. To leave we've got someone better and we want to bring them in that's a bit cruel and harsh and people who do those kind of things i don't think it works out well in the end but hopefully um it wasn't that situation but i'm, I'm sure we'll never know um, um yeah so there you go Mill, new goalkeeping coach from Millwall, andy marshall uh also from Millwall's website we got this junior match day experiences so yeah, so they've advertised uh, various packages that they're putting on sale today. Still no uh, Mule TV subscription fee. We don't know what it is for the season. I um, have no idea. It's not available to buy yet. Uh, they haven't even announced that the program's been cancelled. We, That's kind of like an open secret. They haven't publicly announced it. But we know because um, they've told a few people that... There's no, you don't need to write for the program next year, because there won't be one. And the the company that publish it, Curtis Sport, are um have told people that it's it's not um being published by Millwall next season. So the program's gone. They haven't even announced that. So, um, so this is for the match day package, which they haven't ever put a price here. Now you know when they don't put a price there, whenever you're trying to buy something online, it's going to be through the roof. So this is what you get if you're a uh, matchday mascot. I think they have they have the one that someone pays for, and then they pick one out of a hat for the junior lions. So this is what you get. You get full home kit. Uh, you get free match tickets for two adults and one child, um, and you get all this other stuff. A trophy. You get a match match mascot trophy. You get appearance on the big screen. You get all autograph books signed by the players. So what would that what there's no price here, but what would you think that would set you back? At least two hundred quid, two fifty, three hundred. Gotta be something like that. Now they've got this one here, pitch side experience, up close with the pre-match action, that's seventy five quid. Um what is that about? So you get a signed ball and you get a photo with your favourite player and more. That's seventy five quid. Is that these are people they they kick around on the on the, the ball on the pitch, you see the little kids before the game and then they they come to the centre circle, take a pitch, and then they walk off the side. Um, now here's here's the the one as well, guard of honour. Um, so you you stand as the players come out and you wave the flags, and it says available to individuals, football clubs, schools, and more. Participants will be handed flags to wave as both sides emerge from the tunnel. Uh, up to twenty children aged age five to fifteen can become flag bearers for the day. But you must be wearing matching kit tracksuit. Now, what does that mean? Um, does, did I give you the match, matching kit on the tracksuit? Because back in the day, long, long, long time ago, I was a ball boy for me all at the old den. Um, an Anglo-Italian cup game midweek against Charlton, uh, where we lost 2-1 after being 1-0 up. And... Uh, they gave us all, we had to, there's like a rack of tracksuits and we had to pick one out to wear and they gave us a black uh, butter tracksuit to wear for the game and then afterwards we took it off and put it back in. So, is that what they're going to be doing? I don't know. Or, then I kind of figured out, well, it's for, for football clubs and schools. So, if you're, like, if you're a junior football club, you have to come in your, your football kit and do that. Or like if you're, you're like scouts, you, you come in your scout uniform or shit like that. 
or if you're from the same school, you've got to come in your school uniform for a football for for a football game. That's not right, is it? So uh, that is a bit weird. I don't know why they want them to all be uniformed up. Um, but the price there, twenty-two pound for adults and five pound for under is. So I assume that that means as well. Um, uh, uh, that's that includes the seat to watch the game as well. I assume you're not just paying for, to walk on the pitch and wave a flag. Wave a flag. That that includes a seat for the game. Um. But yeah, it says available to individuals as well. So, what does that mean? You can they let you join in with our other groups, and you don't your kid doesn't know them, but they let him join in. Or if you're just like a group of families in that, like nieces and nephews and grandsons, and it's your granddad's birthday, he's 70 years old, and it's on the, the game day. So, you organize for all you, he can do the pitch, pitch side thing. Match sponsor, ball sponsor, whatever. He goes on the pitch and all of his grandkids and whatever are there waving a the flag. I don't know, something like that. I don't know. But they're doing player escorts as well. You know, what you see in, in the World Cups and that, where you get players wearing, uh, walking um, out, holding the hands of the players, the kids holding their players' hands. And it's always comical when you've got like a little midget, a midget player, and they they always put the biggest kid with him. It's so funny, they got like some 16 year old kid, he's bigger than the player and they put him out and he's got to walk, he's got to walk out holding his hand, that's, that's absolutely hilarious. Um, but yeah, so they're doing the same thing with that as well, up to, but only up to 10 children. How's, how's that work? There's 11 players from Millwall, I suppose, well, would you want to hold the hand of an away player coming out? I guess not. Maybe they can just randomly pick some kids out of the away end and let them do it for free. Because they're there anyway. Just Do you want to come and walk the players out? Just walk this way and stand here, wait. I guess so, I don't know. Um. Anyway, so that's what they're doing this season. They've sorted that out. They haven't sorted out the uh, Mule TV packages, but they've sorted that out. Uh, moving on now to... Speaking of Mule TV. So... They've put up the videos finally. They, they put these up on Monday. So they put up the highlights video of the Crystal Palace game. They put up a full match replay of the, the Crystal Palace game on the Millwall TV. Now you need to be logged in. Now here's the thing though. I paid the £5 for the game. So I, I did log in and saw it there and was able to watch it. Now I don't know if I can see it because I paid that £5 for that game and it's unlocked for me. Or, if you, anyone watching this, if you have a Mill profile, if you log in and go to this um, page, um, whether you'll be able to see it as well. Um, I don't know if that's the case, because obviously I've already paid for it, so I can't. I could set up another, uh, log in with another account and, and just make one up, but I don't want to do that. Um, so it may or may not be there for you if you log in with your mill profile. If you didn't pay for the game, you can watch um, the highlights and the full match replay, assume, assumingly with uh, mill commentary on it, which was there, and uh, which won't be there for the Colchester game. Is BBC Essex um, team, and um, yeah. And on that note, thank you for watching, and goodbye.